Alright, this is going to be our follow-up video to the installation of two 7970Ms in a M18X R1. So we'll start by installing a secondary card. Before you guys do this, make sure that you have proper ESD grounding and are using the right tools for the job. In this case, a small Phillips screwdriver, some thermal paste, and you may need a small flat screwdriver for disassembly. When you're getting ready to put the second card in the system, you'll need to make sure that the crossfire cable is properly connected to the card prior to installing it. You won't have room if you wait till after. Note that there's a small arrow on the top of the crossfire connector. It may be difficult to see in the video. It's important that this arrow is facing towards you when you install it. If you install it the other way around, you risk damaging your card and your crossfire will not work. So when inserting a card into the system, insert at an angle, press down, and then lie the card flat. It's secured by two screws. Once the card's been secured, take your heat sink, ensure that thermal padding is in the proper positions for the cards. It's helpful if you make sure that everything makes good contact ahead of time. So we already have. So you, well after you've checked your heat sink, you need a small line of thermal paste. We recommend and use IC Diamond 7, and this is included in the upgrade kits that you purchase from us. Put the thermal paste on. We'll go and put the heat sink into position. Give it a gentle press to spread the thermal paste around and then begin to secure the heat sink. You have to make sure that the heat sink is properly lined up with the GPU spreader to ensure that you'll get the screws into position properly. So now that the secondary card is installed, just route your crossfire cable through the system. And prepare to install the primary card. So this installs the same way. So that would go into the slot and press down. And that would be secured by the screws. Take your primary heat sink. Now, depending on the configuration you initially purchased, you may have a 75 or 100 watt heat sink. In this case, our system came initially with a 75 watt card, so that meant that our heat sink needed to get modified in order to fit the profile of the 7970. You can see here, underneath the thermal pad, that we've ground away a small piece of the metal that was preventing the card from making proper contact. It's very important that all of the major components on the card get proper thermal padding and that the GPU die makes full contact with the copper plate. If this doesn't happen, you can risk overheating, which can shorten the lifespan of your card. So now that it's been properly modified, we'll apply the thermal paste. Again, you don't need very much. This stuff is very potent. Too much and you have inefficient heat transfer. Too little, you don't have enough heat transfer. So with that in place, it just drops in. And then same as before, using small silver screws to secure the card.
your crossfire cable. Ensure that the arrow side is facing up and connect it to your primary card. Once it's been connected, ensure that it's flat and out of the way of any other connectors where it can catch or pinch. And then you're set to start reassembling the system. So after the cards are installed, All right, let's put the, top, put the top case back into position, reconnect all the cables. This is very important for your system to work properly. And ensure that you're not catching the edge of your crossfire cable on the secondary card when you go and put the power button cable back into its socket. So in that case we are clear. Your next step will be to install the keyboards. So you have your secondary macro keys which have two connectors, one for backlight and one for the actual input. These latches lift up and once the cable's in position, they get locked down. That latch is down. These are normally retained by screws along the top. However, we are in this machine so often that we're only using the bare minimum of screws to keep it together. The main keyboard. Same principle, except with larger cables. So you'll install the display once again. There's two sockets for that. You may have to bend the screen forward a little bit to get it in correctly. Take care when routing your display and webcam cable. There's a little channel for it. And it connects there. Webcam cable runs along the same path. over by the macro keys. The Wi-Fi cables group all the antennae together and they slide through to the bottom of the machine. after once we secure the display. The display is held down by long screws both on the top and the bottom. We are just using the top ones right now. Slide the keyboard into place. and secure the top control panel. So make sure that's well pressed.
this down. Locked in this place. Close the notebook. Flip it over. Wi-Fi cables. Go back to here. connect them to the card. However, we don't again because we're not using the Wi-Fi while we're doing these tests. Last but not least, the bottom panel goes on, slides towards the front of the system, and then finally battery locks in and you're ready to go. So we'll get our power connected and we'll show you how it works. So we're currently using a 240 watt AC adapter. As the 7970s are 100 watt cards, this will be insufficient to power them under full load. We're going to hold off doing any full load benchmarks until our 330 watt adapter arrives, but in the meantime this will show you that the cards do indeed detecting crossfire. So we'll put the AC in and power up the system. So we're going to get a warning at the start telling us that indeed we do have a 240 watt AC adapter and that they do recommend a 330 watt adapter for dual card configurations. They also give us the option to ignore it, which we will, and we will start our Windows 7 installation. Computer, right click, and go to manage. Once the system fully boots up, it'll bring us to computer management. We will go to our device manager. list that we have two Radeon HD 7970s. We will also go to our Catalyst Control Center and confirm that they are indeed running in Crossfire. We've changed to advanced view under performance in Crossfire. AMD Crossfire is enabled. So as soon as that power supply comes in, we'll update this video with some benchmarks and you'll see how fantastic these cards truly are. Thanks for watching.